God of mine, I'll have no idols. O God of mine, come lead the way. O God of mine, I'm greatly humbled. This sinner's heart, you came to save.
Good morning. Let's all stand together. Psalms 27. Recently, we were in an event, would have been our X2M 109. This today is 112, to give you a reference point. The Lord, he comes to me in a way like he's never come before. And he says, you extrapolate revelation based on light. I am the revelation. And he said, infant, ready yourself for the infinite. And I knew that unless we come to him as a little child, we shall not enter in. And I knew that he wants to awaken a galactic progeny. He would awaken a people born out of the heavens. And David said this in Psalms 27. Yahweh, you are my revelation light. And you are the source You are the source of my salvation. I have no other hope and I have no other place to go but to you, Lord. I have no other salvation. My finances aren't gonna save me. My relationships and networking isn't going to save me. Yahweh, your revelation light, Yahweh. You're of my source. Who is your source? You're the source of my salvation, and here it is. I will fear no one. I am fearless. And being caught up into that place with you, Lord, there's no fear in love, for perfect love cast out all fear. He that has fear lives in torment because he's not been made perfect in love. I'll never turn back and run. For you, Yahweh, surround and protect me. And when the evil ones come to destroy me, they'll be the ones who will turn back. My heart will not fear. Even if the greatest army was to raise up itself against us right now, Church of the Living God, the Ecclesia, the called out ones, even if there was to raise up an army against us, I will not fear. Even if they were to attack us at every side, I will not be shaken. Hey, listen, what can be shaken will be, but that which is not shaken will remain. And here we are. We're here for you, Lord, the only one, to proclaim your name, to give you glory. You're the one thing. David said this, I only seek one thing. I only seek you. I seek you above all else. I want to live with you every moment in this house. Rise, O oh Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Can you behold the marvelous beauty of the Lord? Take us up.
And this should be our experience right now that you would begin to be filled with awe. Or return to your house. Come back to your house, Lord, that you fled like in Ezekiel's day and you went out of your own house. Lord, come back to your house where the worshipers worship you in spirit and in truth. See, the Lord will not impose himself on this event. He will not come down to us and make himself known unless you ask him to because he is not an imposer and he is not a manipulator. His love is so real and so thorough that he will not impose himself on you. So you have to let him, you have to ask him, come. You say to the Lord, I want you more than my own life. I want you, Lord, more than anything. I want you, Lord, and the Lord will come to you. He'll meet you in this place. He'll meet you in this sanctuary. He'll meet us today. And he's wanting to have an event here today. The Lord, you, outside of created time and space, wants to come in and intervene into this place. And we ask you, come, Lord. Come down out of the heavens. Honey. <clears throat>
press into the pillar of fire. Press in through your fear and through your pain. Press into the pillar of fire. He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. Shall I not make? wants to heal a person that has an issue with, and you may not even know this, but it has to do with the brain. It's like a, um, 
It could be like a brain aneurysm and you wouldn't, you wouldn't know it. But you, if you have any inclination of a brain level issue in this place, if you do, raise your hand. A brain issue. If you three, if you would just come down here, we're gonna pray for you. We have to deal with this before we can progress. And just, just come down because it's a possible issue with a brain. It's a brain injury or aneurysm. I believe the Lord keeps telling me I, I want to heal this, and this is a serious issue. And those of you that I've called on before to pray, I want you to come down. You know who you are. I want you to begin to pray for these these three three right here. I'm the healer, and I heal you now in the name of Jesus. Just pray, pray, pray for these. It's the electric impulses of your mind. Full healing right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Stay with him. Wait on him. We wait on you, Lord.
Here comes the light, here comes the light. Oh. If our hearts could sing, they would sing a song. A melody to remember that we are yours, bought and paid for. And if our hearts had eyes, they would look beyond to see everything that's good. It comes from you. So we and we. I'm reminded right now of William Booth in his early days in the Salvation Army. And I remember reading this story and listening. And they said that man would stand up there and he would say, pray. And he had this deep, like, guttural voice. And he told his guys, he said, pray. Hey, I'm sure you can feel what we're up against right now. But this is when we... We bound down and we go against the force of darkness. It's right now. It's right now. This is when we storm the gates of hell. This is when we, the church, takes a stand. We have to take a stand and stand our ground now. And we pray in the spirit and we pray. 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 And press in and break the barrier that says that the Lord can't heal the human mind. Break it. We ask you, break her, break open and go through. Press into the Lord. Church, pray. Mm. Pray. We have the victory because of the Lord. Mm. Press into the pillar of fire. Oh, 
press into the flood, press into, press into, press into the light, the light, the light. Oh, the kingdom is not there, it's not there, it's not there, it's within you, it's within you, it's within you, press in. She alone on the day, a Monday, I love your day. Oh, love me, I 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 love Sound your trumpet, God. Romans chapter 12. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? To surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices, and to live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes the genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating ideals and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed. You know what that, but inwardly take right now a metamorphosis. You're not a caterpillar anymore. You're a butterfly. And it is time for you to fly. It is time for you to fly. It's time for you to walk in liberty like you never walked in liberty before. It's your time. It's time for the great metamorphosis of the age. I've come to the end of my rope. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I came to the end of myself. Yeah, but the end of me is him. It's him. But the end of me is where he begins, and I don't need to hide anymore. Behold, I'm a new creature in Christ. And it's not been yet seen who you are in the Lord.
nothing blocking you to the Lord except you. The veil has been rent, so press in. Press in. My heart's hands, they would clap the sound in the rhythm with your heart and I. If our hearts had feet, they would stomp the ground. Oh. Clap your hands, wave your hands, give a shout, sing a song, yell and scream, whatever you need to do. Let your heart out. And mind and heart and soul. Ay, 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 ay.
from the other side we are by beyond the space we are light and we dwell with him by him who is light. The I am, the final frontier, the one enthroned in glory. It is he, it is he and us. Desire bread. 
and water that does not satisfy you. I will give you myself. The word would say to you, I will give you me. Come and eat. Come to the table of the Lord. I formed you, says the Lord. I made you. You are the creatures of my hand. You are the sheep of my pasture. Come and drink. Come and drink from the waters that cost you nothing. I have paid for everything for you. Come and drink where you will never thirst again. Come to the water. I sit enthroned in between the cherubim. I am the mercy. I am the God. I am the only God. Come to me, all ye that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give rest for your soul. Come into the seventh day and enter into rest. to the other side phase on through into the light of the glory of the Lord Cause my goodness to pass in front of you. Even so, come quickly, Lord. The spirit and the bride says, Come. And the spirit and the bride says, Come. Christ in you, Christ in you, Christ in you. Christ in me, Christ in me. I'm phasing from eternity. Replicate, 
replicate, replicate yourself in us, Lord.
promises now. Cross the Jordan now. Walking in faith. Cross. Step on the rocks. If you put your feet into the water. The ark of the Lord is ahead of us. Dip your feet down into the water. It's not going to take you over. Heaven and earth colliding. will not stay in the wilderness anymore. No! No, you're not those. We're not those. No. No, the wilderness days are over. It's over. Oh, heaven's coming down. Oh, yeah. No more. No more. God, if you even can, what he could do if we pressed in to find him. Let's enter the promised land. Giants can keep us out. And these giants shall be bread for you. You will eat from the substance of the land of Canaan, and you will eat from the heavens, and the place where heaven and earth collide. You can 
Daniel chapter 12, at that time, Michael, the great prince who watches over your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, unlike any other from the nation's beginning up to that time. But that time, your own people, all of those whose names are found written in the book will escape. And many of those who sleep in the dusty ground will awake. Some to everlasting life and others to shame and everlasting abhorrence. But the wise, but the wise ones will shine. Like the brightness of the heavenly expanse and those bringing many to righteousness will be like the stars forever and ever. But the righteous, you the righteous will be like the stars but you the righteous are like the stars forever and ever. Rise, Michael, and execute a war against our enemies. Angelic war. Secured against the giants in the land and bring the great awakening, Lord. Bring the greatest awakening the earth has ever seen. Oh, a star child has been risen. Stars rising.
Amen. for you to hold me, hold me, keep on blinking at the moon, know that I'll be there soon, and it's a lonely, lonely world now, but it's only, only, right now, don't you understand? Second, Second Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 3. Man, amazing, amazing, right? Wow. Um, I don't want to talk about you, Lord. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't need that. I don't need it. Thank you, Chris. Well, sorry. Thank you. This week, um, <clears throat> the Lord wakes me up. It was the most tender thing. Sunday, excuse me, Tuesday morning. Today, today, Sunday morning. It wakes me up in in Psalms one ten two. 
and he says, and, and says this, and, and like do, like do I have begotten you. And excuse me, one ten three. It's it's a part of one ten three, and he says, <clears throat> and they will volunteer freely in the day of your power and the beauty of holiness. Like do I have begotten you, and the sweetest spirit just comes into my bedroom. This is just the most serene, most glorious experience with him. And I knew that we were phasing. We were phasing into another dimensional place in him. And I knew that out of the 12 dimensions that he had created, that we were phasing into the one who is uncreated light. He said, like, do I have begotten you? I am going to make all things new. Declare it, write it down. He tells him, and we we went through this back at the Pavilion, Revelation chapter 21. I'm going to say something to you guys, and it is true, and it is real, and it is right. Write this down, make it plain. Behold, I declare to you, everything is new. This is a declaration of the Lord over, over, his, over us, over everything, the whole cosmos, everything he's ever created. I'm going to bring a new reality. I'm, it's, it's, a whole new, it's a whole new idea, the idea that you've not even conceived before. That is the new. It's me in you. And you've heard me say this. I, I, I said that I was here 11 years ago. I stood up a 35-member leadership team across the front right here. And, man, we were ready to take the city. I was like, man, we're going to get 10,000 people. We're going, to be, we're going to take it. We've got, I had all the department heads and everybody in position. Let's do this thing. I go home. I'm sitting at my desk. The Lord brings me to the church of Laodicea. He speaks directly to me by three encounters, all at the same time on my desk. He says, you've lost your first love. We were seeing miracles in this ministry, like legitimate miracles and healings, that, like Parkinson's disease and other, other um, the, you know, things that were happening. And I, and I thought, this is it. This is what God wants. He, wants. he wants miracles. He wants people to be saved. You know, watching, you know, numerous people convert and everything. I thought, we're ready. We're, we're ready. And the Lord says, no, you lost your first love. And he said to me, if you would come with me, I'm going to do something different in the church. I'm going to union myself with men. I don't want just a fix y'all's outward problems. I want to come in and take up my abode in you. I want to do something more for you than put arms and legs on you. I want to give you me. And I'll tell you something. That has been one of the most painful 11 years of my life because I would grasp at anything that I can see. I would want anything that I could put my hands on and in the pride and arrogance of the church we have, we've tried to build things, build out of man's hands. And God says very clearly, I'm not going to come and dwell in a temple made with man's hands. He said to me, he says, you must put your hands behind your back. I was like, no one's going to get this in the church. We are into volunteerism and getting offerings. We work out of an SO system, sacrifice and offering system. Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 10, I don't delight in those things. I don't don't desire them. I was like, the whole church will collapse off this. It's what we've built and propagated the church out of. Put your hands behind your back and like 
We talked about last week, go kenosis, go full with the full acknowledgement that I will empty myself of anything that I can make happen out of my own human ingenuity, skill set, um, problem orientation solving, uh, networking with others, all of that I'm going to say, you know what, Lord, bind me hand and foot and have your way. Have your, way, have your way in this sense that uh, you can, I, I'm going to sanctify you. I'm going to make you new. I think for me at least, and I don't know about you, it's been the hardest thing I've ever tried to do is not doing something. You know, not to make something happen. Not to create some kind of thing and cause it to be. That that wasn't what God wanted out of us. I mean, Jesus is going to say this to every one of us. He's In the scripture, he's going to say, you know, I do nothing except what? I do nothing. I mean, the Lord's like, I'm going to do nothing except what I see him doing. And I think what I've learned through these years is we've heard you, Lord, but we, we've not seen you. And he said this to me. He said, sheep hear, but kings see. Kings and queens. He said, I'm going to have to upgrade your internal mechanism that was lost in the fall so that you can begin to um, apprehend me and to know me by seeing me. And he began to open my eyes, and I began to see him. He did this with a wilderness man, Moses, and he taught him to see. Moses was going by every day. That burning bush may have been burning every day, not consumed, but Moses didn't see it until God brought Moses to the end of himself, right? And when he did, Moses saw a bush that was not consumed. He began to see, and it says, and he turned aside to see the bush that was not consumed. He began to behold uncreated God within natural space, Um. He began to partake of the unveiling of the glory of God. One thing that I learned through this whole process of, of the last 11 years, one thing that has become very clear and plain to me was he's always been there. Hey, that kind of messes with you. And I realized that in my own hubris. You know what that is? Pride. Hubris is pride. Of the human kind, of, of the human pride kind, the hubris kind, <laughs> I realized that I was walking past him all the time, not wanting to submit to the life of the cross, the, the kenosis. And I couldn't see him because God resists the proud and gives grace to who? And I knew that God was after full dependency. And I knew that I was hedging on him because I don't like the way full dependency feels. I didn't like the experience of not knowing. I didn't like the experience of not being able to do something or make something happen. I didn't want to put my hands behind my back, and yet God said, do it. Self-empty, hold your hands behind your back, and out of that would come a reality of the grace, grace. (laughs) Oh, Zerubbabel, he's going to bring forth the capstone with shouts of what? Say it, say it with me. I can't do it. My left hand, my right hand? No, with shouts. Hey, quit striking the rock, Moses. Shout it out of your mouth. With shouts of. Right. You could feel it this morning. You could feel us run up to the stops. I I know you felt that. Did you feel it? Did you feel it when I called for the healing of of the brain, for brain aneurysm? Did you feel it in the room, how we ran up against the stops? You can feel feel it. You can feel like, am I believing, am I trusting him right here? I want to encourage you because what I found in this journey was once I came up against that place, I found that I had come to a place of infinite resignation that I could do nothing more. 
I found that's the place of what I mean of coming to zero or coming to kenosis and saying there's nothing more I can do here. And this is what I found there at that stop every time. If, if we would just say, I trust you, Lord. I've never been here before. And we would just step across that place. He will meet you every single time. It'll be in the place of the unknowing. It'll be in the place of I can't make it happen. It'll be in that place that God is. And he will come and meet you there every time. And God, he meant it that way and he designed us to be that way. Adam and Eve walked in that way and that's the place of the unveiled glory. 1 Corinthians chapter three. Paul saying here, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? (laughs) Um, And I've I've preached this a number of months ago, but I want to say right off the bat, one of the problems that you'll face right off the bat when you enter into uncreated space light, or okay, into light space, when you enter into that place in the Lord, one of, the, one of the things that's going to challenge you right off the bat is self-commendation or condemnation. One of the first things that you face um, is, because I think much of the church and much of us have moved into that space in him, in the light. And then what you find right off the bat is something comes to challenge your position. Does anybody know what I'm saying? Or is it just, you know I, know, I think you know what I mean. And one of the challenges that we have is, Paul saying, am I commending myself again? Because if you get into self-commendation or self-condemnation, you will be back out of the light. Why? Because you're back into self. Do you see it? Because what happens is your enemy's going to come and try to guilt load you on something in the past, or he's going to try to get you to reference to something into the future instead of the now of being found in Christ. He will work something like in the realm of commendation, look at what I'm going to do, look how amazing I am, or look what I did wrong and how messed up and jacked up that thing was. And the Lord would say, Don't get into commendation or condemnation. Stay in me. Know the work of the enemy to get you out of a place of living in Christ. The I of the self cannot be there because it's Christ in us, what? The hope of glory. It's not what I can do. It's not what I've done. It's him. It's it's him in us. It's putting the focus on him and keeping it there. So am I beginning to commend myself again? Then he says, I don't need a letter of recommendation from you. Uh, Like, I don't need letters of recommendation to you or from you as some other people do. And again, I've I've mentioned this a while back and we went through this together. uh, together. Uh, So he says, um, you yourselves are our letter. It's written on our hearts, known and read by everyone, revealing that you're the letter of Christ delivered by us. I like what Paul does because he's so relational. He doesn't set it in some abstract reality. He puts the reality right into the people he ministered to. Your reality. He doesn't make a replica of God in the sense of of some kind of outward appearance of something. He doesn't, he's not saying that this building is the church. He's saying you are. (laughs) He's like, you're the reality of the letter that's written. The ministry that I've received is, is, is you, someone asked me a few months ago, they said, well, how's the congregation dealing with what we're all going through? And I said to them, I said, I've seen more bright eyes than I've ever seen. And they said, that is the strangest thing. I have never heard anybody 
ever say anything like that. And I said, I just, that's my one noticeable thing. I've seen more eyes bright than I've seen dim. I have saw so many eyes dim, now I see so many people lit up. I've seen more bright eyes. And they said, huh, what a way to assess uh, the congregation of the Lord. Well, we know what the scripture says about it, right? The eye is what? It's the light of the soul. And I believe that when I see bright eyes and when you see one another looking at each other glowing, and guys, hey, we are going to the path to glow. <laughs> We're going to be glow, catap- uh, glow butterflies. <laughs> Not going to be glow worms. But that you would glow. And in your eyes, there would be this radiant light coming out of you. And that is probably one of the greatest marks I've ever seen. It's not the dimness, but the light coming out. And that's what he says here. He says, that's our letter delivered to you. Look at them. Um, years ago, I, I um, was reading Jonathan Edwards, I believe, memoirs concerning David Brainerd, who was a preacher in the Northeast, and he preached to the American Indians. And I don't know how many of you know about Brainerd's journals or have read his journals, but he was uh, a godly, godly young man who had, uh, he had contracted tuberculosis. And Brainerd um, lived out in the woods, and he built him a little hut. And, um, and Brainerd would cry out to the Lord on behalf of these Indians to lead them, to lead them to Christ. And it said that, that his tuberculosis was so bad that his, the, his body temperature was so hot that the snow would melt around him. Um, when he was on his knees, it would melt the, the, the snow all around him because he was right there in the middle of that cold weather that we have in you know, New England. And, and he said that when he would cough, blood would come out and it would hit that white snow. And Brainerd, got, he got gripped uh, with the Lord and he, he was, you know, they said about him, they said that when he would preach that through a drunk can interpreter, the guy he preached through that was the interpreter for the Indians wasn't even saved. And he said the Indians would fall out on the ground like screaming and yelling and come up soundly converted. And they, and they said that... Uh, the testimony of Brainerd's life was that the generation of Indians that converted under his ministry for two to three generations later were some of the most godly people you had ever met. Why? Because that man was transmitting something. He was transmitting God. And the conversion of those Indians, they converted to where his ceiling became their floor. And God knows that God knows that he wants that reality of himself in us at such a level today that he's not just, like I said earlier, just getting arms and legs on people, but when the converts, which will roll out in this awakening that's forthcoming. Their ceiling will be the heavens. (laughs) Their ceiling... Their ceiling will be the sapphire throne. That's their floor, too. He said, you know, in 09 to me, I will awaken a galactic progeny. I will awaken sons and daughters born out of Zion, born out of the heavens. There was, I think there's, you know, maybe developmental processes that people go through, but we, we don't... We don't need to transmit a gospel message anymore that's like defunct and it's not really coming in for a life change. The Lord never wanted it anyways. This cheap salvation and seeker-friendly thing, he he wanted to come in and really like run the whole show. And I, I do believe that there are people that are serious. They're not playing games with the Lord anymore. They're saying like you, and there's many of others of us that are like, we're going to go for reality. We're just not going to have this anymore. Brainerd was one type of man like that. I, I want to encourage you. I believe that you're a people like that. I believe that about you. I believe that's why you're here. 
That's the tablet of the human heart because God wants to encode your heart with his code. Uh, Let's call it a codex if you want to, but he wants to encode your DNA with himself. I mean, um, today, I'm up here and, you know, (laughs) I'm like, what is going on? I get so touched by the Lord. I'm like, I'm going to either collapse or I'm going to try to keep myself floating in this other space. Lights like coursing through my body, I can feel it. It's like shooting through my veins and my arms. And he says, partake of some more of my light today. And I'm praying for you that you're experiencing that. That light's beginning to course through your veins while we're in the midst of heaven. He said, the Lord says to me, he's like, you know, um, I, I wanted to get my life in you as my people so you could access the unveiled glory of heaven and earth together. I wanted, you to, I wanted you to be able to access into this realm, which Stephen was singing for us, uh, this promised land. Um, and so that's what today's text is about, the greater glory of the Spirit's ministry. He says in verse 7, but if the ministry that produced death, that's carved in letters on stone tablets, came with glory so that the Israelites could not keep their eyes fixed on the face of Moses. Because the glory that was emanating out of his face, a glory which was made ineffective. How much more glorious shall the spirit of glory be? Sometimes we've set the standard on the church at such like, like here, and we've said that's the standard of the church, and we're all going to like stay within that. <laughs> and if Moses' face glowing is a lesser standard than what we, the end-time church, are supposed to walk in. We have to be realistic and real with one another that how many faces are we seeing glowing? And if that that glory is ineffective and fading away, how much greater glory are we, the church, this end-time remnant meant to walk in? And we can't imagine and we shouldn't imagine, I, uh, I thought it was so interesting bringing us into a pew space here, you know, because it would take us back. It would put us in reminiscence of how many of us were converted in churches like, that looked like this as replica. I don't know if you were. I, I was converted at home on my face in a Bible study. But I, but I grew up in this environment. Right down the road uh, from here somewhere, that way, at the First Church of the Nazarene in Hendersonville. And they have a, probably a, exactly, almost built exactly like this in structure, probably built around the same time. I'm like, why don't you take us back to that? Why don't you take us back to replica of something that said something of, a, of, a, of a, an era gone by? I don't, I'm not saying that I figured this out exactly, but I'm sure of this from this text and what he's been saying to me all this week. He's like, I'm going to bring the church into the greater glory. A glory that you have never seen. A glory that even Israel in the Exodus. Well, they got to see the Lord come down in the cloud they, they saw him come down in fire at night. The fire is glowing through the cloud. During the day, it's a cloud, but the fire is going. They saw him like that. And then, as many of you know, he said, I'm going to come down. And he comes down, I believe it is on Mount Seir in this like big fireball. And he marches his way across Paran, and he comes and sets up his glory on Zion. And it says, even Moses was exceedingly afraid. 
And I think, like, typologically speaking, that that was the greater glory because when, they, when he said to them, I'm going to appear to you, and he appears to them, he's, Israel's probably like thinking, you've already appeared to us. We know what you look like. You're like the cloud with the fire inside. You were right there when we crossed the Red Sea. You were right there when we're going across the Jordan. What are you talking about? You're going to appear. And I, I think that, you know, I, I was working through this in myself I, I, because, and I'm going to try to handle this the best way I know how. I'm like, I've like, I've known you, and many of us have known Jesus in the Passover. Let's just kind of think of it like that. We've known him at the cross, and, and, and we've had our experience with him in Passover. And then many of us here, I think we would run a lot of people out of here, have known him at Pentecost. <laughs> You've been filled with the Spirit. You've experienced, you know, a various giftings brought into your life. Remember that when you experienced the baptism of the Spirit? I was a little confused, in, again, in 2011 here because I experienced the baptism of the Spirit in, I think it was 2003. And so when he said, you know, I want to do something more, I could not frame it into any kind of reference point. I, I was like, I was going after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I already was baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what are you talking about? And I remember there's a local pastor here. I won't mention his name, but I went to him and I said, there's more in the Lord. And he got so mad at me. He said, it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Carol. Don't you ever talk like that again. That's arrogance. And I said, no, I, I think there's something. There's, God's wanting to bring us into something else. And you know, because you know how it is when you top out in your reality, it can be like, don't say anything else about the way things should be. This is the best it gets. You know what I mean? And I, I got to admit, that many of us, myself, have been accustomed to, this is the best it's ever going to be. And, and so the Lord began to teach me something about uh, going blank slate. And I, I think you've heard me say this, that the way to enter into this next place was to go no mind, not to actually think that you knew ahead of time what was going to be. You had to go into a place or blank slate where you said, you know, I don't know what's going on. And I found that that was the mode of what is meant to lead us from Passover to Pentecost into um, tabernacles. Because if, if Moses, in, in let's say a Pentecostal experience, has uh, experienced the height of, of what we would, typologically speaking, in the Old Covenant today, then why would God say, to Moses, I'm going to come and appear in front of all of Israel and scared the living daylights out of Moses. Why would he like say there's something else there? And why would today, when we're looking at the, the text, why would he say that that ministry that produced death is not as great as the one that is coming, the one that is by the spirit that brings in the greater glory? If that ministry produced condemnation, how much more the ministry that produces righteousness will excel in glory? Um, I heard a preacher say this week that, that Moses said in Exodus 33, show me your glory. And the word said, I'm gonna show you my hiney. <laughs> The preacher didn't say that. That was my rendition. I'm going to show you my backside. There's some glory. I mean, this so, and I'm going to have to hide you in the cleft of the rock to show you that. And I heard this guy say this, and I, I, it really like struck me. He said, the Lord's going to show his hinder parts, his external parts to Moses. <clears throat> but in this end times, he's going to show us his inner parts his face. I, 
I'm going to show you, Moses, the realm of the outward work that I can do <clears throat> in miracles, revel, you know, all, all of this outward thing. I can do all that. But in this end time, this exodus to millennium, this second exodus, I'm going to show you what's inside me. Why? Why would God reveal what's inside him? Because, right, he wants to be in us. And this is tabernacles. It, I remember when I was here uh, 11 years ago, and I remember this concept hit me, and I never had this concept before, ever. It hits me while I'm here, and I was like, oh, my Lord, you're in my hands. Uh, you're taking over my body. Have any of y'all ever had that experience? Or you know what I'm talking about? Like, wait a minute. Like, you just, you're, you're wanting to take over. Like, I, I, do you understand what I mean? Like, you're not in control of yourself. <laughs> I'm really there. Like, I'm really there, and I'm running your life. I'm in charge of it. Uh, and I remember, like, thinking, okay, I'm going to step over here. Oh, that was the Lord. And then I step over there. That was the Lord. And I step back. Oh, that was the Lord, too. He just did that. Uh, he walked me, he's walking me over here right now, standing like this. And that's the Lord. And then he's doing this to me. It's the Lord. <laughs> he took over. You see what I mean? And I thought that was the most craziest thought that ever occurred to me because I was born me. <laughs> and I thought it was always me. And then you find out the Lord's like, no, I want to be in you. I want to run the whole entire framework of your whole entire humanity. And that is a strange thought to have. You want to, you, you want to take over? Mm -hmm. I just need permission. I want to take over your DNA. I want to rewrite your code. I just need your permission. If you'll just let me have you, I'll rewrite the code. So I'm not going to have, I don't want an external tablet anymore. I want to put my code in you, my, my codex. I want to put my whole mind in you. I want to put myself into you. I don't want there to be any distance between um, me and you. Uh, can you imagine such a thing as God wants to put his full Christology, his full divinity in you? The same divinity that Jesus has in you. That's it. That's, that's the, that, I believe that's what he's saying here. He, he's saying... How much more glorious will it be? Um, verse 10, for indeed what had been glorious now has no glory because of the tremendously greater glory of what replaced it. For if what has been made ineffective came with glory, how much more? Listen to what it says, has what remains come in glory. And I, I think one of the, the big things that I struggle with at the beginning of this is this word remains. I, I thought that, well, before the word messed with me a lot, I thought that if you, you're gonna have to go around the wagon wheel a hundred times, you know, and you, 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 nothing's going to stay the same in you. But the, the, I, wanna, I wanna encourage you today in this closing, that the, the glory of this greater glory is, is that it remains, it, it remains. How do I explain this? It's kind of like this. If God takes something out of you that's not like himself, and then he puts inside of you, let's say he uploads this one component of his word into you, he's never going to take that back from you ever again. Because this greater glory stays in with you. You're never going to, if, if you say, I'm going on the line in faith and I'm gonna trust you, Lord, and I'm gonna stick this out with you. And you go for full kenosis, you go to zero, and you go hands behind your back, you say, I trust you. 
And then the Lord comes in and he, he makes this change in your life. You're never going to be the same again. And I, I felt like the enemy, he tried to lie to me. This was years ago. He says, yeah, what's the use in going through that? You know, what, I mean, what does corporately gathering in a worship set do for, for you? It's, it, or what does it do at all? And it was like, you're just wasting your time uh, being with the church and worshiping with the church. What a waste of time. <clears throat> No, because every time you cross over and every time you come to the end of what you can do, God comes in and he gives you himself and you partake of the divine nature. And every time you do that, you're becoming more like him. So much so that he told me, you're gonna become so much like me that you're going to phase into a completely new person. Um, how I explain this, he's like, he, he, t- he shared this with me a couple weeks ago. He's like, just come on over to the other side and let my light come into you and fuse your being. I'm gonna phase myself into you by light now. And you're gonna get even so much more like me than you are now that you're going to stay there for the rest of your life because I'm going to transfigure you. I thought, man, what you're talking about is, this is evolutionary. (laughs) So this is the final frontier. God's not trying to take your body and throw it on a trash heap. I, that was one thing that, that really, really, I thought, you know, God, maybe he doesn't like the body and he's got to get rid of the body. You know, he's, told, he's let me know I can work with the body I've given you. There's a generation that's not going to see death. Do you hear me? The last enemy is going to be destroyed in our mortal bodies and we are going to be changed in the flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. There is an end time generation that they're not gonna go to the funeral home. He he shared that with me back in 2013, said pioneer for a glorified body. I said, human agency is going to go for glorification. He said, yes, this ministry, I'm assigning it. I said, nobody's going to believe it, Lord. You can't prove it with outward things. You're like, you're not going to give us more miracles and everything. I'm not going to be, anybody's going to show up. Nobody can see the work. They can't see it happening. What are they going to see it with their own eyes? You can't see it. It's like one of the hardest things. I thought this is the hardest thing to do. I mean, because everybody will show up if you give them arms and legs. Then that's the piece of cake, actually. (laughs) That's the easiest thing, but to get a face glowing, that's going to take some kind of other thing, Lord. (laughs) It's going to take some kind of other belief. It's going to take pressing into some kind of realm that we haven't been before. He said, no, I'm going to do this. I am going to cause a people to literally be transfigured. He kind of put it to me this way. The human body is built for an upgrade. When I created it, I can upgrade it. I can keep putting so much of myself into your body that eventually it is so been upgraded that it has to glorify. Think about this. I, there's, no, there's like a path for, for us. There's a path for this end time remnant. It's just like step across and come across with me and let me infuse you with light. Go ahead and phase in. So don't, when you feel that pressure or whatever, don't shrink back, just go across it. Psalms 110, 2. So three, like do, I have begotten you. All right, let's stand, we'll close.
Kelly brought this up and she said, I have the verse that proves what you're saying. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter four, Hello. verse six. Hello. For God Hello. who said, um, let light shine out of darkness. Hello. Made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory displayed in the face of Jesus Christ. I'll read it again. For God said... For God, who said, Hello. Hello. let the light shine out of darkness. Darkness out there or darkness right here? Darkness of the human body. Uh, the human, be, let light shine out of darkness. Like we've thought of it cosmologically, but what about it um, here? I'm going to, okay, Moses, I showed you my uh, hinder part, my backside. Now I want to show you my face. This generation is a generation that will see God's face. And listen, no man can see God's face, what? And live. What does that mean? That means you die to yourself. That means you have to die to yourself to see God's face and live. There's going to come a point where it's just all going to come together. And... <laughs> and there he is Christ in you the hope of glory um, thank you crossing over now so I we wouldn't know unless God gave us a preacher. That's what it says in what, Romans ten fourteen or something. They wouldn't know unless a preacher was sent. So I'm here to, I'm here to tell you something. I'm here to um, proclaim a message. Acts three twenty one. Jesus is retained in the heavens until the restoration of all things. What things? All the things of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Everything in you that he takes over all of you. I submit myself to you this morning, Lord, again. That even right here at the close of this service, when we begin to go into just another communion experience, I always look at it like this. It's another exchange. We get to have another one in this event right now. Right now, let your, uh, your soul phase into the Lord's light and into the face of Jesus Christ right now. Uh, as they play, when you come forward for communion, just give him yourself again, another opportunity. And tomorrow morning when you get up and he wakes you up, another one. <laughs> and then all day, that's what Paul says, I pray without ceasing. What was he saying? I want the out resurrection. I want to be transfigured. I want the real coming out party. <laughs> I want Christ, I want Christ in me coming out of me. I want light to break forth. Right now I do. Right now you do. Right now, he desires this. You feel him now? Yes, 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 now, now, now. I give you myself again. Oh, Lord, again, now. Take me, take me. Take the Jericho in my heart. Take all my walls down and rush in on me. Rush in, rush in through me and go. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way with us again. I'm, oh, I'm going to take this little thing out of you right now. And I'm going to put James chapter 2, verse 4 in you. <laughs> and I'm going to take this little thing out of you right now and put Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 in you. 
and the word becomes flesh and dwells. Tabernacles. Uh, while Stephen and, and Austin plays Stephen sings, and uh, we come forward for communion, and then we'll take communion together. And while you're just coming forward, just meditate on the Lord, contemplate God. <laughs>